2015 season was a new beginning for many. Former two-time champion DJ Kennington had a busy offseason securing a second team and building a new look Castro Edge Dodge Oval Track car. Canada's best racing team, led by Joey McCall, took on more cars and added the number 87 to its fleet. The first race ever run on the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series banner came back in May of 2007. Nine years later, with NASCAR's roots embedded deep in the culture of the Canadian racing scene, Autodrome Chaudière had the honor of hosting the series' 100th race. It's a quick and racy speed plant that demands close quarters racing and short track etiquette. It was under these conditions that 42-year-old Alex Tagliani returned to the series in his number 18 EpiPen Chevrolet with car owner Colin Livingston. 15-year-old Caden Lapsovich made his NASCAR oval debut at Chaudière. This budding short track star quickly adapted to his family's Tim Horton's ride. Quebec short track standout Alex LeBay secured the fastest qualifying time and paced the field for the first 100 laps. Up front, Scott Steckley soon put pressure on LeBay for the lead. The 22 racing team had already put the disappointing finish from race one behind them. With a brand new car built over the winter, their short track game quickly got up to speed. Nicknamed Springsteen, this new ride was built to rock. The 22 and 36 cars went back and forth multiple times as they battled for the top spot. Still there. Keep digging, buddy. Keep digging. Back in the pack, the racing got aggressive, and the air was a little less clean. Coming out of turn one, McComb, Dilly, and Baker tangled, bringing out the caution. After the halfway break, everything seemed to be coming up steckly. The Canadian tire driver had his Dodge on cruise control until lap 265 when the transmission plug from the pump line tore loose. Two straight disappointments in the opening two races set Steckley well back in the points. Catching up was going to take a monumental effort. It was a new car. That was our first race with it. And uh, we definitely had a very, very good car until uh, transmission problem with the oil leak. For the past couple of seasons, Jason Hathaway and his Team 3 Red Crew have held a monopoly on the short track market. The Steckley sideline, the free machine, took charge. Conflict between the 99 of Marc Antoine Camerant and the 47 of LP Dumoulin sent the WeatherTech Dodge driver down the banking and into traffic, collecting young Lapsovich and ending his day. But uh, it was a cool track. I wish I would have got to finish the race. I think we had a good car there. As the final push was on, Anthony Simone and Andrew Ranger made a last push to close the gap up front. While Kennington and LeBay settled for podium spots, it was all Jason Hathaway at the front. Three machine in his 100th start. Crowd surf for Jason Hathaway, and they catch him. There's always the money in the trophy and confetti at the end. So, yeah, I know it's pretty cool to win these races, and, um, you know, people, the fans, and... and, and People just don't know how much work goes into these these teams and race cars to get them all prepared and travel and everything else. And you know, there's only 11 races, so it's a short season and a long winter. So if you get to win one, it's uh, pretty special for your team for sure. Every year, there seems to be one event on the schedule that generates a special kind of buzz. This year, that honor went to the inaugural event at Sunset Speedway. The one-third mile oval just north of Toronto was a late addition to the NASCAR schedule and home tracks program. The Leland Industries 300, presented by Johnsonville, the third race of the 2015 calendar, became the most anticipated of the season. Gary Clute proved that he and his legendary motorsports team are no flash in the pan as they secured pole for the second time in three races. As the green flag flew, Scott Steckley channeled the frustrations from his first two outings and drove around Clute's topside to vault to an early lead, bringing his teammate Tagliani along for the ride. DJ Kennington and Anthony Simone were jostling behind them for a top five spot. The 17 of Kennington was working the bottom, while the 95 of Simone worked the second group. The two touched, sending Simone high into the air and into the turn two wall. You know what? I, I wish I could take that race back because uh, that was my mistake at the start of that race. I, I got into turn one too hard and uh, the car got loose on me. I ran up the racetrack and 
I basically wrecked the day for both of us. I mean, hey, he could have gave me a little bit more room, I think, but uh, just a bad day from there on out for us. Caden Lapsovich, a two-time Superstock champion at Sunset, knows his way around his home track. He found himself in the midst of seasoned veterans with far more experience over long runs. But Lapsovich held his own, looking the part of the veteran himself at just 15 years of age. I'm used to racing guys with more experience than me, and, but it helps me as a racer to be a better racer, learn from them. On lap 61, he worked lap traffic beautifully and made a pass on Scott Steckley for the lead before staying there for the next 44 laps, much to the delight of the sunset crowd. Soon, the 18 of Tagliani caught the 76 of Lapsovich and eased past into the lead. Tagliani got tired of playing me and my shadow with Caden Lapsovich, moves the 76 out of the way, and we've got ourselves a new leader. First of all, the track was raceable. So when the track is raceable and you have multiple lines available to you, then you can go through lap traffic. The second thing was our car was consistent and was fast on the long run. To everyone's surprise, the race went 268 laps without a single caution. I had to get scraped off the right side of the seat. I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't a short track guy at that point. <laughs> I had my lips out the window. Sucking for air. <laughs> Through it all, no one had anything for Tagliani. He pushed onward and eventually gained a full lap on the entire field. Jason Hathaway's Chevrolet was the only other car able to keep pace with the 18, but only after he was already a lap down. It was a long race under green. Uh, I had no radio. My radio quit right off the hop. And um, um, until I got on the board, actually, the scoreboard, I really didn't know where I was. Um, you know, every 25 laps, you look up at the scoreboard, see where you are, and you're not on there yet, and you better get the guy in front of you. So, you know, Tag pretty much handed it to us all that day. For the second time in two races, the record books were rewritten. Alex Tagliani became the first driver in series history to lap the entire field. So I think it, it, you need all the pieces of the puzzle to, to create this, this moment that I think we all deserve as a team, driver, sponsor, everybody really deserves it because we all worked hard. The competition is raised, so when you, when you get one of those wins and we do it the way we did it, yeah, for sure, I mean, we'll take it. Jason Hathaway's strong back-to-back -back runs put him in control of the points chase with Scott Steckley beginning to gain ground after his early season struggles. Next up, the series digs into a busy month of July, starting at the ICAR Circuit Road Course, and yet another series record is about to go on the books.